The already large Democratic presidential candidate field has gotten one larger, with the official entrance now of former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick. And what better place we figured to gauge reaction to Patrick's decision than right here in his own Bay State backyard. What's your immediate response to that, to, 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 to Governor Patrick getting in the race? He should take up knitting. I think uh, it's a little too late for him to be honest with you. It's already missed too many debates. People would want to hear what he has to say, and he kind of took that away from the people. I feel good about it. There are, there's a couple other people I like, mm -hmm. and I'll definitely consider his position a little more carefully. I'm talking about what it takes to rebuild a national community. There's enough people in there already, and one more is just going to confuse the whole yeah. process. I would like to see it start to reduce so we can concentrate on uh, putting forth a candidate that's viable for the White House run. If that was his thought process, knowing that he wasn't going to be able to qualify for all 50 states, how is his decision making going to be when he's in the Oval Office? During the flood, you in the leadership. I think you're a fabulous politician, human being. I liked having you a governor. Perhaps next time? So the Sunday Roundtable has gathered to talk about that and other things this morning. And with us this week is Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh. And we do welcome State Senator Vinny DiMacito to OTR. Great to have you with us, Vinny. Thanks for having me. Happy pre-Thanksgiving. A Republican representing Plymouth and Barnstable, but you are leaving Beacon Hill. That's it. To be, so you're still a state senator right now. I am for another nine days. Another nine, nine days, nine but, days. You're, but, you're, but you're heading on to Greener. I'm going to Bridgewater State Wonderful. University. I, I would like to show you a picture. Let me start with that. We're talking about Deval Patrick and where things are. Take a look at this picture here. Deval Patrick was forced to cancel an appearance at Morehouse College in Georgia this week when only two people showed up. Now, granted, it was the night of the presidential debate in Atlanta when most political junkies were otherwise occupied. But, Marianne, is there another message here? That's why he went to Atlanta, because he right. wasn't at the debate. All the press was there. So he decides that he would have an event at Morehouse College, which is one of the most famous HBCUs in the country. Now, if he could have gotten 200 people there, the press would have taken notice. Instead, he got two. And that tells you everything about his campaign. Too little, too late for Deval Patrick. He's never going to take Vinny, off. Vinny, what you read? No, I have to agree. The reality is, is he's clearly, if you look at the field, he's uh, probably the most ar articulate. Uh, he is a, a great in inspirer of the people. The problem is he's gotten him way too late. And so I just don't see how he could possibly pull it off at this point. So you heard Ed Markey this morning, the senator, and uh, he was defending his status as the incumbent, yet he is running behind Joe Kennedy in early polls. You heard me ask him about it. What's your advice to him for the next 10 months, Vinny? I keep doing what he's doing. I, you know, I'm a, a strong believer that all politics is local. And just my experience being in the Senate, working with the federal government, his office and, and he himself is very much focused on the little stuff. The Lawrences, as you heard, the, the Lowells, the Plymouths, the Cape Cod Canal, those two bridges. I mean, the, the work, those are the things that, you know, when every, there's so much other noise out there, these are the issues that I think are going to resonate in a, in an election. Marion, when you're down 14 points against Joe Kennedy, is there a way to come back in theory? Yes but here's his only shot. The only place he's close to Joe Kennedy, because as we've discussed, <coughs> Kennedy beats him in every demographic group in every part of the state, is Greater Boston with college-educated voters. He needs to somehow get a toehold with them and then try to expand that in other parts of the state. The other thing he needs to do is outspend Kennedy. But here's the dilemma. Is he going to do the People's Pledge? Is he going to do? Is, is he going to accept that? If he does, he won't have the money. If he doesn't, I think a lot of people will be really, really upset with him. So he's damned either way. Next item is the presidential race. The fifth presidential debate is already in the books. It was last week. Marianne, flat out, who was the biggest disappointment? Pete Buttigieg. He had a chance to really put this race and separate himself from everybody else as the newly minted member of the first tier of candidates. He did not do it. He had a serviceable, you know, uh, performance, mm -hmm. but he should have had an exceptional one. And he still can't answer questions about race. Mm -hmm. So this is his second turn in the spotlight, and he didn't really shine on the stage lights. So I think that may foreshadow his inability to pin down this nomination. Who, who made their case to move forward? Um, Amy Klobuchar. I called her the winner the other night. The reason is she she put it all together, drew a sharp contrast with with Buttigieg, her fellow Midwesterner that she's got to win Iowa against. And she had the line of the night when she said, if you think a woman can't beat Donald Trump, Nancy Pelosi does it every single day. <laughs> Vinny, uh, you know, I know we're I know we're calendar a year away from from voting for president, but but uh, talk to me about who didn't belong and who did belong. Well, uh, l let me just preface the fact that, as you know, I just finished up my last session. We were at the state house till 1.30 the evening of the debate. The night of the so debate, yeah. so um, I was not able to, to watch it. Just about my sense is I, I, I tend to disagree in the sense that 
said, I think Buttigieg is coming up strong. I mean, you look at it, he's leading in the Iowa polls, New Hampshire. Uh, for somebody that basically represents less people than I do, um, he is, you know, going toe to toe with uh, you know, two U.S. senators, a vice president, and I think that that's a pretty impressive thing. So I, I think he's still, despite a, a, a pretty lackluster debate from everything that I've read, um, I think he's I think he's pretty strong. So do you have a read on a disappointment from the from the? Uh, so, you know, from my senses, really, it's the the six other candidates six uh, others, yeah. that, that are there. It's really still, you know, it's pretty clear. Now, you're five in. There are four, you know, incredible, mm -hmm. you know, strong candidates that continue to rise to the top. And so my gut is that, the, you know, the, the, all of the six of them, despite how hard they're working, eventually it's going to fall apart. And I think once Iowa is done, I think the, those six are going to drop away. We continue on the record. Stay with us.